In May 2021, a TikTok video went viral that left everyone who watched it confused, worried, and afraid in that exact order. Yep, the lady recording the clip said all what we were thinking, WTF. This viral video caught by a TikTok user with the handle 627 showed a woman in Seattle who looked like she was in a lot of pain limping through the streets. She was yelling, crying, and bleeding, and she looked like she needed help. She looked disoriented. Her hair was mostly shaved with just a few spots of long brown hair. Anyone who saw the video was shocked and had a lot of questions. Was she the subject of terrible abuse? Was she using drugs? Was she going through a mental illness? It was all very confusing. Because of how her lips were blackened and her face looked extremely pale and white, people who watched the video quickly gave her a nickname that stuck, calling her the zombie woman. Like I said earlier, her face looked weird and pale, with a very obvious and bloody wound on her stomach dark bags under her eyes, and almost no hair on her head. She only had one shoe, and the shoe was covered in blood. It also looked like she was holding a bag or a cloth wrapped together, but the video was too far out to be certain what it was. All we could ascertain was that whatever she was holding was also covered in blood. At first, people thought the video was fake, a hoax for views because the one source of this clip at first came from a TikTok account. So people thought it was one of those pranks people would do just for the views and attention until they saw the Seattle Police Department arrive. Now people were certain that this wasn't a prank. This was real and whatever happened to her really did happen to her. As you can see, it was a heartbreaking scene. At first, we can see numerous police officers trying to calm her down, but she just kept walking and screaming, even escaping their grasp at the end of the video and continuing her erratic behavior until she was gently restrained. The victim can be heard screaming that she doesn't want to go to the hospital as the cops and paramedics put her on a stretcher, which raises more questions. Why wouldn't you want to go to the hospital? What is she running from? Even more tragic, she starts pleading with the police not to take her baby. This was odd at first to anyone watching because I didn't see any baby in the video. Most people didn't. But then a closer look and you noticed that the object she was holding had changed. I have to admit the video was hard to understand, but on closer inspection, it looked like she was not holding the bloody bag she was holding in the beginning. Instead, she seems to be holding something completely different. Many people have different ideas about what this object is because the video is fuzzy and makes it hard to tell for sure. However, some people think it looks a lot like a baby, especially the head of a baby. Despite all these questions everyone had watching this video, no one could figure out what was happening. Usually with things like this, the internet, and I mean you people who are watching this video and hopefully subscribed are good at finding out information about events or people. Even deleted information is brought to the light. I see all your investigative work and analysis in the comment section. But in this case, despite the video going viral across the internet, nobody was able to find out any information on this woman. She was practically non-existent in a day and age where even your fart has a digital footprint. When I mean no one could find out anything, I mean no one. The Seattle Police Department didn't make any official statement about the event on any of their platforms, despite their officers obviously present in the viral video. Also, even though a few news stations picked up the story, there was no official conclusion or clarification about the event. Then in less than a month, every video clip of the event was deleted by TikTok and YouTube not by the uploaders, but by the actual social media company, 
taking it upon themselves to delete every trace and video clip of the Seattle zombie woman. It was as if they were trying to erase that event and make it look like it never happened. This only made people think something was going on for sure and the government could be involved in it. For a year, no one knew anything about her. Because of the lack of context and closure, a new internet mystery was born and theories about the event quickly spread like wildfire. One of the theories was that some people thought that the woman in the video could be the woman named Marilyn Stanley because she had similar injuries to her head when her boyfriend Zachary Gross physically abused her. And there is a plausible reason for why people brought up this theory. Heck, the two women kind of looked alike. So I can see why people would think this. Marilyn Stanley is a lady from Kentucky. She was dating a Zachary Gross, but she broke up with him because he was physically abusive towards her. She said that after they broke up, he became obsessed with her and even got a job at the same book warehouse where she worked. After their breakup, she agreed to see him one last time at his house to talk things over. She hoped this would make him feel better and hopefully find a peaceful way to end his obsession with her. When she got there, things spiraled out of control and she went through a traumatic event. I don't even think the CIA can torture prisoners the way Zack did to the woman he claims he loves. According to Marilyn, Zack lost it and started beating her badly for two hours. Then he sent his pit bull to attack Marilyn, resulting in the dog biting off a significant portion of her right ear. Then he cut off her head all the way to the bone with the pink folding knife she had brought for safety in case he became hostile. He put the bloody piece of skin and hair in a plastic bag and handed it to her as he drove her past her mother's house and dumped her on the street. Marilyn's mother saw her badly bruised and abused daughter lying on the ground and called for help. She was rushed to the hospital where she had surgery right away. A severed artery in her scalp was pumping out blood and she had multiple fractures in her ribs and face. The doctor later told her that her hair would never grow back because her scalp had been cut off. She underwent six surgeries and experienced lasting nerve damage. It was horrendous. Already, from the story I just told you, you can start to see the similarities between Marilyn and the zombie woman. The shaved hair, the bloodied outfit, and the badly bruised body. It's common for abusers to not only attack their victims after their release date, but also try to replicate the same trauma that they inflicted during the first time. So people thought maybe this was Zach doing it all over again. Fortunately, this theory was wrong. For starters, the traumatic event happened in 2015, six years before this video was taken. Plus Zach is still in prison for his crimes. So there was no way this could have been Marilyn. And thankfully it wasn't. They just look alike. Another theory that came up was that she could be on drugs. Apparently, this type of thing was a normal occurrence in Seattle. After the video went viral, the woman who shot it later shared an update about the woman who was outside her window. In the TikTok update, she said, living in a city like Seattle, is it not uncommon for people to not have the resources to properly care for their mental health, their housing, for their addiction, and so unfortunately, it's not abnormal to hear someone screaming like that in the middle of the day. When I looked out my window and I saw her face, I was truly shook and a little bit scared because I've never seen someone look like that. Addiction, especially methamphetamine abuse, is a problem in Seattle, as it is in many other places in the US. Addiction Center said, in 2016, opioid-related deaths hit a record high in Kings County, where Seattle is located, with the largest concentration happening in Seattle. Of the 332 deaths from overdose, two-thirds were from opioids. I know drugs can actually break people down to the point where they are unrecognizable, and her worn-out clothes could be a sign that she might be homeless, which is a sad reality for too many people in our society who are going through a lot of struggles, which makes sense, but I don't know. I don't think I have ever seen someone so wasted and addicted that they'd be covered in blood or being in that state of contusion or trauma. 
If you have seen someone in that sort of state, you can let us know in the comment sections and correct our naive belief about drug abuse. Another theory was that she was experiencing a psychological breakdown that was just too much for her to handle, that she just went mad. Remember how she was screaming that they shouldn't take her baby and how her stomach area was covered in blood? Well, there was a speculation that she got into a terrible car accident with her husband and her child, and she was the only one that survived. The bruised and burned marks on her body made this assumption look possible. And to be honest, this theory sounded more plausible and believable than the rest, even more than the Marilyn theory. I've seen what trauma can do to people. Some people never recover from it. And the baby she was holding in her hand is what was left from the accident. In such, her whole body movement and gesture fall in line with someone who had a terrible accident and just managed to survive. Honestly, I'd probably be screaming my voice out if something like that happened to me. No one can imagine what she was going through. But there was one problem with this theory. If she was in an accident, why would she strongly refuse to go to the hospital? Also, there was no report of an accident around her vicinity. If there was, believe me, the media would have reported the story. The media house loves a good sad sob story. The lack of accident reports and media coverage made this theory just nothing but a theory. And oh, there was no baby. The last theory was that it was a viral marketing tactic for a new movie that was filming in Seattle. This might sound weird to some people who think the marketing for movies is just trailers on YouTube, billboards, and posters. You will be surprised by the lengths marketers will go to to promote their movies. The clever marketing for the Blair Witch Project used fake police records and interviews to show that the events in their upcoming horror movie were real. Many people were fooled by this effective campaign and thought the events were real. It had to take the actors' appearances on news and entertainment shows to let people know it was all a marketing stunt for the movie. So this was a normal thing, and around that time, a new movie was actually filmed in Seattle, making this theory possible. But as said earlier, the arrival of the police and paramedics made people think otherwise. And as of that time, the only movie shot in Seattle was the movie Kimmy. But after watching the movie trailer, there was no scene like the viral video in it, and the whole movie didn't have a single zombie in it. So that meant it wasn't the movie. Luckily, one woman never gave up on her search for answers, and what she discovered blew this case wide open, as well as answered every question we ever had. Hey, ma'am. Hey, it's okay. Hey. Well, we're trying to help you. We gotta help you. Hey. Come on. Coming to check you out. No, no. We have fire to come check you out. Okay? No. Hey, my name's Sean. No. Hey. No. I don't know exactly. No. Oh. Ma'am. We fire fire is coming to check no. you out. You wanna tell us what's going on? Just have a seat. We're not going to touch you. Just have a seat. Oh, yeah. She's bleeding. She's got... Yeah, she's... Ma'am, what's your name? No, no. Ma'am. 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 Have a seat. Yep, you heard that right. It turns out our mystery woman was... Pause for a second. I don't even know the words to use to describe such level of stunt. And believe me, it gets better. Uh, basically a woman screaming, uh, 
walking away, oh. calling for assistance. Okay, so we don't think there's like a hit by a car or something like that? Or we have no idea. No! And... I got an AMR coming right now. Is there a face burn? No, it's gonna make our It's, it, it, it took me a little bit while, but it's like, it's like, almost like, like Halloween, like zombie makeup. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay. Did you call? Yeah, they're coming. Yeah, okay. This time, this was not my theory or an assumption made by Motec. This time, you can see and hear from the first responders that it was all a hoax. This discovery was made by a YouTuber named Rebecca MS. While the rest of us had given up on finding out the truth, Rebecca persisted, decided to look into this and found out the truth. Someone saw her persistence and sent her body cam footage from the first responders, which she compiled into one long 22-minute video and showed the world that all that we thought about the Seattle zombie woman was wrong. Usually when watching these types of prank videos, I sometimes would get agitated because you wasted state resources that could be needed somewhere. Plus she just altered everyone's perception of helping people who might actually need it. If someone unfortunately goes through something like this and asks for help, people might be reluctant to help after watching this clip, thinking it is just another Seattle zombie woman hoax, not knowing that person does actually need help. Just the same way people were quick to want to help her because they thought she was Marilyn. They formed a connection between the present with the past that they knew and reacted to the event accordingly. Now the next time the police are called to something like this, they would think it's just another prankster. So I was angry at that. But the more I watched, the more my anger turned into respect for her. Just her sticking to the script. Let me show you what I mean. Despite being called out on her act, she still stuck to the script of being a woman in need of dire help. That level of determination was impressive to me. The police themselves were puzzled about the whole situation. The facts looking right at them was saying she applied makeup, but the way she's behaving says otherwise. A normal person would have surrendered and just called it a day and be arrested or fined. But this woman was still screaming like she was hurt. The last thing the police want is for evidence to come out later to say that she was actually a victim and they did nothing. So they did a little investigation of their own to make sure that no stones were left unturned. The woman was sent to the hospital while police canvassed the area, speaking to any eyewitnesses. They discussed their impressions of the event. No, that looks like look, that really good that makeup. Kind of like wow, that yeah. like, but uh, but uh, maybe check with the film and see if it's. I mean, that was. There's also the. Who was who that? Who is it? We didn't get hanged. She is covered in head to toe with metal. What's that? Who who is what? She's what now? She's covered in head to toe with like. It's like zombie makeup, like blood, stuff all over her face. I don't think she did it to herself. It looks like either she's got makeup over her hair or her hair ripped out. She looks like she's urinated and defecated herself. I don't wow. think she did it to herself. They're out looking for more info, but we just don't know. She like a suspect? Yeah. We're the police decided to check out the film institute to see if anyone had recently used their props or anything. But that was a dead end. Hey, my name's Sean. Just to let you know you're being audio and video recorded. Quick question. Uh, did you have anybody in here that was working on makeup that was almost kind of like horror-ish, zombie kind of stuff? Uh, any kind of disturbance here whatsoever? Uh, no, not recently. Uh, no. Not to my knowledge, at least. Okay. We, uh, we found a woman who appeared extremely distraught, but she was 
covered in very professional makeup. Okay. Like almost kind of like uh, like for a movie makeup. Yeah. Uh, nothing. That, that doesn't sound like us. No. Okay. All right. I was just yeah taking a chance here. No, for sure. That makes sense. Okay. Um, no, we just got students that are filming. They're just using lights today. No makeup or anything. Okay, so just lighting yeah. stuff. Okay. Oh, man, I don't, maybe she came from someone's apartment, her own apartment, or I don't know. Maybe she just took something super crazy, like she's into like cosplay and took some kind of crazy drug, and I don't know. It's yeah, it's it's tell. yeah, it is tough. But I mean, that was really well done. You see. I am not the only one impressed. Her level of determination has a way of swaying you, and instead of being angry, you are impressed. Now, from the few clips, this could answer some of the questions we had earlier on, like why she didn't want to go to the hospital. Well, that's because one look at her and her ruse would be over, and she didn't want that. But why did she do this? What was it for? Despite being a hoax, this wasn't for TikTok or Instagram views. So why? And again, who was she? Luckily, our late night detective, Rebecca, had all the answers to our questions. She even found the name of the woman, going by the name Kimberly Kasai. And from her Facebook page, we saw how she planned the whole thing. The photos in her posts match everything in the zombie video. She even replied to a comment on her profile on how she did the makeup revealing herself as a talented makeup artist. From what she wrote in some of her captions, it sounds like the event was nothing more than a political statement against vaccines. Her point seems to have been that she thinks the COVID-19 shots could make people become zombies. And she was just demonstrating how she thinks people would look like if they took the vaccines. This was a form of protest for her. I found her Instagram page to find out more about the kind of person she is, but she set it to private after the event. Personally, I'm just glad that this story was nothing more than just an activist demonstration and not an actual story of someone mysteriously missing or dying. 